Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel again, and today I'm going to continue working on an 07 Dodge Grand Caravan. It's an SXT. This will cover a lot of the caravans in the town and countries that have the power sliding side doors. The one that's activated whenever you push your key fob or if you push inside. I want to show you a failure that my uh, stepmom has been experiencing, and that is when she pushes the button, the door only opens a couple of inches and that's it it won't go any further and I think it's because the motor in the door isn't getting power now it could be that the motor has failed or it could be there's a break in the wiring going to it so we're gonna find out what that is but I want to show you what it looks like and the symptoms okay so you can see here's the van and I'm sure yours looks a lot like it because they all look the same and what I'm doing here here's the key fob and I want to open the door on the driver's side so you push this twice and that's all it does right there. It doesn't go any further. Now the door, it opens and closes just fine. There's nothing wrong with the track itself and there's no uh, kind of mechanical obstruction, but it also doesn't close um, other than manually. So what I'm gonna do is uh, jump into this and show you what uh, I believe is the problem and that is uh, in the wiring. All right, so I've got our van inside of a uh, covered area. I've got the door all the way open. It's being held open by its own uh, latch. And uh, I'm going to be working on this track area right down here. All right, so what we're going to do is take off this cover, which houses uh, some of the wiring that's going to the motor. And then this track itself, um, it has wiring in it too. So what we're going to do is first remove this cover. Now there's a couple Phillips screw heads that are right here. So we're going to remove this one and this one and uh, pull that cover off. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's all there is to that. So now we're going to work on the track. And for the track I've got a couple different tools because I'm not sure which one I'm going to need. I've got a uh, pick, one of these cheap picks from Harbor Freight, and then I've got one of these uh, inexpensive pocket screwdrivers that uh, a lot of the auto parts stores give out uh, as uh, promo items. So let's uh, first try the pick, and what I'm going to do is uh, pull this tab out. You can see there's a tab here, and this tab, once it's pulled out, it'll allow it to come off of the pin that's connecting it to the uh, door itself. So let's go ahead and drop that down, and now it's free. Not very difficult at all. Okay, now that we have the uh, track off of the door pin here to where um, it can, it's just a wire protector basically that has to move and articulate for the door opening and closing. What I'm gonna do is show you how to remove these uh, covers, and it's real simple. You're going to take your thumb, and you're gonna place it in the center to the side that's furthest away from the hinge and you're going to push down you're going to make that gap right here increase you can see when i do that this gap increases that'll allow you to put a screwdriver in there and it just pops right open it's just a little clip so i'm going to do that along quite a few of them to see if i can find the break and i'll come back and show you what that looks like well i really didn't have to go very far you can see here's where's the wire is broken at um, it's only about uh uh, four links into this wire protector that um, it's just broke clean in half. All right, so you can see I got the wire stripped back here, and I got a piece of uh, laminate flooring from a job that we did some time ago, and of course electrical solder. And then I'm just going to uh, push those two together, push all the strands together, and then go ahead and hit it with the solder and get it uh, to where it's sealed up real well. All right, so you can see here that I've got it all soldered up and I've got the heat shrink on it. I might put another uh, wind of uh, electrical tape on here just for safe measure. And uh, now I'm going to tuck it all back into its uh, link uh, protector and also the uh, wire loom. And uh, we'll get it back to where it needs to be and I'll show you what you're going to do from there. I right, just wanted to show you, uh, I put some more electrical tape on here obviously. And then I wound all of them in electrical tape. But you don't want to get it too thick and too stiff because it does have to bend and be flexible. If your track comes apart, you can see these holes here. They just have these little axles that they clip over. It's nothing real fancy. Um, you just uh, slide it back over the same spot that uh, it's supposed to be at and you just squeeze it together. And you can see now it's, 
it's back the way it's supposed to be. Um, so don't fret if that happens to you. Now I'm going to uh, reinsert the wire inside this uh, link track and uh, clip all the doors closed and then see how flexible it is to make sure that it looks like it's going to work okay. You want to make sure that it goes back in with the same amount of uh, play that it had before so it moves freely. Alright, so I wanted to show you how easy it was to get this back in. What you're going to do is lift this wire and push it down inside of the bracket and underneath of this wheel in a little area that's provided for it. That's why this uh, nylon weaving's on here so in case this wheel touches it it doesn't eat into the wiring. Then at that point you're going to have to slide the track back and up over the pin just like that. I want to make sure I get it all the way up in there and then push that clip in so it can't come back off. Once that clips on it's basically holding itself on that link. Now all you have to do is uh, again make sure that this is down inside of its little area put the cover back on and put those two Phillips screws back on and it'll be ready to test out. Alright so now I've got everything back together I got those two screws back in holding that cover down everything looks to be freed up and exactly the way it should be so we'll go ahead and try to close this so I'm gonna push this key fob a couple times Let's go ahead and try to open it now. Perfect. All right, there you go. A simple repair with just a couple of simple tools. Now, I use solder uh, to make the wire connection, but you could probably use a butt connector. You just have to make sure it's insulated and that it's sealed off real well. The problem with the butt connectors are it does make it a little bit rigid in an area that needs to be flexible, but it should still work okay. So I hope this helped out. If you like this video, click subscribe or uh, click the like button, and I'll try to get more on just like it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye.